Cool. Hi guys. How are you guys doing? Good. Good. Okay, cool. Just a show of hands. How many of you don't have any technical background? Oh, just one. Three. Okay, cool. So unfortunately for you guys with tech background, you still have to sit through my talk. <laughs> Okay, but um, I hope this will be useful for you or any of your friends who want to make a jump from uh, into like the tech industry. So I'm basing this off my journey into the tech industry. Oops. So yeah, that's just a chronology. So yeah, so I actually started off with um, being a law student. So I graduated last year, but prior to that, I was doing a lot of social impact projects, so like um, mental health issue, environmental issue, um, like female um, empowerment issues. So if you guys are into like CSR or, you know, volunteering, you can come speak to me as well. And I went over to the UK to do my university, graduated last year, didn't know what to do because the law industry was also getting disrupted by AI. And so I thought, okay, this thing seems powerful, like this tech industry, what is it? So I took a year off to like figure my life out, going from country to country, um, basically just bumming around. <laughs> yeah, so I, I went around, but I also did like conferences in different countries. I enrolled myself in university um, programs in Japan and also in the US. And that was when I also did um, my interviews and everything um, in different countries as well, just to get a sense of what I would like to do it, through the interviews, understanding like what industry this is about, what's the different roles that's in it, uh, in it for me, for someone with no technical like knowledge. So I joined this company in Singapore in March this year as a startup analyst, looking through the different startups in the Singapore um, industry and also in the Southeast Asia markets. Although we do sometimes touch on like the global markets. And I just recently left as well because um, I'm heading back to the UK for a short while next month. Cool. So um, I guess you guys are all quite familiar with this terms. Are you guys cool with that? Okay, so I don't really have to go through, but I think if you want to start from a startup um, industry, I think these are the necessary terms you have to familiarize yourself with. And so what I actually did um, when I was like at this stage where I'm really lost, I didn't know where to start, I did a program um, called the Startup School, which is run by Y Combinator. Uh, if you don't know what Y Combinator is, they're a really prestigious accelerator that's located in US, launching some of your biggest startup like um, Airbnb. And this is a 10 weeks course that you do it online, it's for free. And through that, they had like different modules. Um, so you could see like a whole list. They tell you like why, uh, why would you want to um, found a startup, um, what's an MVP, what's a product market fit. So like really essential knowledge, um, they break it down and they run this course every year. So, so if you have no, I, um, if you want to further like your technical skills, I would suggest um, going to this um, websites. Um, I basically have tried this out. Um, there are many uh, more out there, but these are some of the ones that I've used and also my friends and I think it really helped. Um, they run courses on like coding, programming, um, Python, like um, I think it's for free, but for some of the more premium one or if you want a certificate to um, show to your employers that you have this skill, um, it comes at additional cost, but it's really cheaper than what you can get traditionally in a like retail model setup. So, but if you want to go for like offline, if you want that relationship, the teacher-student relationship and the classmates, the network, um, these are some of the institutions that they have. So, I guess you guys are all in university or you're working? Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, masters, I think is not very uh, effective because it's very theoretical based and I don't think it, um, catch us up um, to the real life application. Um, I would say a short course would be great. Um, I've seen 
I've attended some of the ones by Sheila's Data, that FE. Um, they are a bit more boutique, but um, the courses are really good. Um, there are some other ones that I've seen, um, Hackwagon, General Assembly, and they could tailor it. But what I would suggest is that really going down and talking to a consultant to see what you want and to see what you want out of your career. To see if um, what the course is um, going to put you through, will it help you further whatever you want to do in your professional life. Yep. So... Another way I think it's great to find out about the tech industry would be meeting people and these are the three ways I meet people through conferences, events and the various tech groups. So this was what I did when I was in the US. Um, if you see this picture, um, I was over at Harvard. Um, I was under the track called Entrepreneurship and Technology. So they get um, 300 um, delegates from different countries coming together and, and they will be split into five different tracks. So one of it is technology and entrepreneurship. So I met great people, they had really like cool speakers. So this guy here, um, his name is uh, Luke Hen, and he was um, a Forbes 30 under 30. He founded a startup when he was in Harvard, he dropped out of Harvard, like I think it was a sabbatical. And then he went back to study and then he dropped out again to find another like startup. They had a really like lag system with regards to how you want to plan like your academic um path. So they like in Harvard when I was there, um the startup scene was really amazing. Um over at Harvard Square there were a lot of startups and they really specialized in biomedical because um MIT was there, Harvard was there. Um, lots of your top institutions was basically congregated around Boston. Um, and then in this picture, I was at um, Silicon Valley. So I was visiting my friends who were working at Facebook and Google. So they kind of brought me around and explained to me like how the Silicon Valley scene was going. And it really gave me a good perspective of how the tech scene was like in the US versus in Singapore. Yeah. So the, the other one was, um, uh, it was with luxury brands and they are looking into how to use technology. So these two people there, um, this girl and the guy, so they are from Chanel and LV and they are looking at ways in which they want to use technology to authenticate like, their merchandise, to tell like counterfeits and the, and the real ones. Yeah. So. And this was me in Singapore. Um, I've already started working in um, this startup scene uh, with my previous firm called Padang and Company. Um, but this was some of the things I did. Um, we went to uh, Facebook um, on like a little study trip. And this other one, I was at a hackathon where we use um, engineering and coding um, solutions to help disabled people. So what I did was I could really like engineer or like code. So I helped them with more of the back end role. Like uh, we did this wheelchair um, design. We had a cover for people in wheelchair. Like you don't normally think um, much about people in wheelchair, but people have told us that they can't go into the rain because they're using the electric wheelchair. And when it rains, they just can't go out. Otherwise, um, water gets into it and it spoils the whole machine. So we thought of a cover to protect like the whole wheelchair and the system and then I help with the sewing because yeah like um, the the wheelchair was constructed using the 3D printer and they did other stuff like um, making the the cover um, they use the metal bit and you have to really have that um, in-depth technical knowledge so I did more of the back end role um, but it really gave me a um, like they really taught me how to use it, like even though I couldn't really be there, but it really helped me to see um, how, um, like even if I don't have the technical skills, I can still kind of get involved in it. Yeah. So events, um, yeah. So I like to go on Eventbrite because they often tell me what other things that's available. And you can also sometimes, I think you can see your friends when they sign up for it. And recently they've merged Eventbrite with Facebook and you can see the events that your friends are going. Um, and it's 
the algorithms actually track like what are the similar events that you have interest in and they actually prompt them up. Um, so these are various tech events and today I just came from InnoFest Unbound uh, which is held at Marina Bay Sands where lots of startups are in and it's pretty cool. In fact, I just saw um, Halima Yaakob when I was <laughs> rushing over here. Yeah, um, yeah so groups. Um, yeah, so like Women Who Code is basically on Meetup. Um, there are other groups on Facebook, Telegram and WeChat. So those are some areas in which I find my community and if I have problems, they are actually really helpful. Like, I was quite surprised by how supportive people are in this industry. And I haven't put it, but LinkedIn, LinkedIn is a great source to find people. Sometimes even if I don't really know the person and I need help, uh, when I message them, they will actually like take time to reply me or even schedule like coffee just to talk through the problems. Yeah. So yeah, that's the end of my talk. <laughs> yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. So you talked about MOOCs and online courses, yeah. right? Um, for me personally, I mm -hmm. start a lot of courses and never end up finishing them. Right? <laughs> so what, what do you suggest? What do you do to finish them? Do it with a colleague. <laughs> okay. That's what I did. So I had an intern who was really into programming and coding. So um, he actually, so some of the links that he gave um, was actually how I came to know of it and I tried it. So we kind of like motivate each other, like, hey, how's your progress? Like, how do you do it? But that, of course, you need to find someone. Um, you need to get someone who you could pace yourself with. Yeah, yeah, cool. So yeah, um, anyone has any questions? Yeah. Uh, now I'm aware of your journey, how you get into the tech, but maybe I missed that part that what actually motivated you to be into the technology? Okay, so, um, I, I was in law school and at that time um, the industry was getting disrupted in the UK but uh, so we had a we had conferences uh, which I organized and the lawyers were basically saying that AI is gonna take a while role like you don't need lawyers next time you can just run it through like a computer so it was like oh no like my rice bowl is getting like <laughs> d disrupted so I was like I think I need to find out like what this is about um, and how to future proof myself. And it's, it's been great. I mean, I've met law firms in Singapore who have started adopting AI and, and they were like, they really like it because it's on a productive um, base, um, a value added, um, how do you say, billing system. But in Singapore um, and a lot of countries for lawyers, it's a hourly based um, billing. Yeah, but uh, I think in Singapore it's still quite insular, so you can still uh, protect. Um, I think they are right now the government's trying to protect themselves from the effects of um, AI, but I think sooner or later it's gonna yeah it's gonna change. Yeah. Um, since you're still one with law, with law background, do you have any concerns about the ethical applications of AI, especially in law? Yeah. So I think I think this happens. Um, I think the regulations are very slow to change. And basically, you need like the um, parliamentarians to kind of debate over it, and it takes really long. Um, but they don't have a structure in place, uh, which is why you see like in US and Facebook, there's this whole big um, issue. Um, in Singapore, I think they are trying to protect this, um, and they are using the fake news um, law bill to want um, to. Um, prevent this widespread uh, rumor from spreading. Um, but I think um, they haven't really looked into like future proving like the laws itself. Um, so a lot of the laws are very outdated, very old fashioned. Um, some of my friends who are involved with this whole regulatory, um, they say that they want to change it, but the system has been very rigid. By the time they change it, like the whole industry has shifted again. <laughs> So it's also like on their end, how do they do it? But I think on the company's end, it's also um, being upfront with what they're doing with like data. Um, I think lots of companies aren't doing that because if you do that, you lose your revenue source. Um, it's a very tricky issue that I think um, I'm not really in a good place to say it. Uh, but I definitely think that um, for the government, they have to think ahead of how the um, industry is actually gearing towards. Yeah. 
cool. So, any other questions? Yeah. Yeah. So you said you had a, you got a job as a, as a startup analyst. Mm -hmm. And at this point, so did you pick up uh, tech skills like coding, or what did mm -hmm. you put uh, in your resume to mm -hmm. um, attract the attention of uh, working on job? Yeah. So okay. Um, so my role as a startup analyst was I look at the different startups in the field and I look at how their technology is. Um, so let's say you have a chatbot, I'll look at your chatbot and see how is it different from the other companies. And basically, basically doing an internal like rating and see what is different and what is, um, um, how this can be applied to like different companies. Um, so my company, we do strategic partnership between startups and corporates. And I look at how is this startup relevant to our client, which are the corporates. And I would say that I haven't, because um, my role isn't really a very technical thing. So I did, I did like learn some programming on the side using the, the courses that I did online. Um, but I would say for me now, I'm not, I'm not trying to be a programmer. I'm not trying to be a data scientist, but it helps me in terms of data literacy. And when I talk to people from startup, like technical, like co-founders, I can better ask them, like, what is your system running on? And it just gives me a better idea of what their technology is. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? Cool. Thank you so much. Yeah. Cool. So that's my LinkedIn. If you guys want to add me. Yeah. So yeah. And I'm gonna teach you guys a new thing. <laughs> Do you guys have LinkedIn? Okay. So if you go to LinkedIn, um, if you go to people, if you go to people, and if you click on the middle one, you can find people nearby you, if you guys want to try it out. So I think this is a really useful, especially at events. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's not Tinder. <laughs> Don't worry. But you have to on your Bluetooth. So you can search like people nearby you. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really cool. I learned it from one of the workshops. I went, she loves data. And that was a life changer because I don't have to go adding everyone I want to catch up with. Like, I would just be like, turn it up. <laughs> yeah, and then I can see people who are already in the area and just add them on LinkedIn. So I hope this knowledge has been useful. So you don't have to go and talk to like 100 people and add them. You can just get them to turn it on and add them. <laughs> right, cool. Thank you. Right, thanks. <laughs>